For many years, science fiction novelists have played around with the concept of intelligent robots, capable of independent thought, learning, even emotions, and able to equal humans, or more than likely, surpass them. But the problem with that concept has never been the programming of it, or the technology, it's the ethics, the morality. In short, figuring out what is right, and what is wrong, because humans can't even agree on that, and if you can't agree on it, how can you possibly program it? I see two parts with the problem. First of all, can a robot make a decision which is dangerous to humans? For example, it can decide to kill or injure another human being in pursuit of some other objective. And secondly, could another human being use a robot to kill or injure another human being? So the problem is illustrated with self-driving cars. Let's say you're alone in a self-driving car and you are travelling along a windy road which is halfway up a mountain and there's a steep drop. So if the car leaves the road, it will tumble to the bottom and probably kill you. Now as you're driving along, two people jump out in front of that self-driving car and it cannot stop in time. The car then has a choice. Does it drive off the road, killing you, preserving the life of those two people, or does it run into the other two people, potentially killing them? That's in effect what's known as the trolley problem, or variant of it, and what's the right answer? We could say, well, let's preserve maximum life. Well, but in that case, who would get into a self-driving car knowing that their life would not be necessarily preserved? You could argue that the two people leaping out in front made a choice or an error, and therefore they should deserve to die. The permutations can go on pretty much forever. And I'll give you another example. Again, you're in a self-driving car and you're right behind a truck. The truck has a load on it and the load is about to come loose. To your left, there is a motorcyclist not wearing a helmet. To your right, there is a motorcyclist who is wearing a helmet. The load then comes loose. The car has three choices. It can drive into the load and therefore not hit either of the motorcyclists. It can swerve into the motorcyclist without a helmet or it can swerve into the motorcyclist with a helmet. What's the right choice? You could argue that you should swerve into the motorcyclist who is wearing a helmet because that motorcyclist has a higher chance of survival. But what message does that send people about wearing essential safety gear? And of course, the occupants of the car would like to live as well. So with hum humans in control, we don't have to pre-program things. You'd make a split second decision for the best and that is accepted. The problem with self-driving cars is that you need to look at these things in advance and program them. And if we can't decide the morality or what's, what is right and wrong, we can't even do the programming. It gets even worse when you look at gaming the system. If a self-driving car is predictable, then you can indirectly influence it. Let's go back to that first example where we've got that self-driving car driving along a road. If you want to kill the person who's in that self-driving car, all you need to do is to get together with two or three of your mates and make sure you jump out in front of the self-driving car and the self-driving car will then drive off the cliff and kill the occupant. And you have indirectly cause their death because you can trust the technology to detect you and make the decision to maximise life. Now is that the sort of society we want to live in? Humanity does not have an answer for these ethics of self-driving cars and intelligent robots. Sci-fi novelists have played around it for years but fundamentally as a human race we've simply kicked it a can down the road because we can. We haven't had a need to solve this problem but we have to fix it now because we are very quickly approaching that can and we can't kick it down any further. AI is taking over pretty much everything and it's only going to accelerate its use in pretty much every aspect of our lives. So we need to get this morality thing sorted and sorted right now. Now back in 1942, the science fiction writer Isaac Asimov came up with three laws which are a pretty good start on how intelligent machines should behave. The first law is a robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to hell. The second law is a robot must obey the orders given to it by a human being, except where such orders would conflict with the first law. 
And the third law is a rival must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or the second law. But I think that modern cars already break these three laws even before we get into the things like AI. Now, why is that? Well, let's look at a mechanical car with no computers whatsoever. I'm not advocating a return to that, let's just look at it. Whatever you do to that car, whatever command you give it, it will obey it. And you can see exactly what's happening. If necessary, you can take it apart. You can look at the cogs, the shafts, the differentials, the levers, the switches. You can figure out exactly what's going on. With modern cars, that's not the case. What happens with a modern car is you request the car to do something, the car takes that request and decides how and to what extent it should fulfill that request. So I'll give you a simple example. If you're driving on 150 k's an hour in a manual older car and you decide to shift from sixth gear to second gear and bring the clutch up, there's nothing stopping you doing that. And it does happen, it's expensive and that's why it's called the money shift. Now if you do that in an automatic vehicle, the computers detect that there's no way the engine can match that, that rev speed and it will prevent you from shifting down a gear at too high a speed. Which is good, right? You want those sort of safeguards in action. Except when you have catastrophic brake failure on, well anywhere really, but often on a racetrack. And this has happened to me. I've come to the end of a straight at 160 k's now. I've gone to put, press my foot on the brake and found I have in fact no brakes. This is the point where you're quite happy to sacrifice your engine by going down through the gears and you don't really care if, you, if you're going to blow the engine to pieces because that's preferable from going off the side of a cliff or smashing into a wall or whatever the case may be. So that's one little example. Now let's consider another example where I think that the cars actually already break Isaac's laws. You're in the desert. It's a duny desert, which means that the only way to get out is to drive up and over a series of dunes, and you're in the middle of two of them. You have in your party someone who is grievously ill and needs urgent medical attention. So you have to transport them to that medical attention. So you load them into the car, but you discover that the car is in limp mode. That means it will not give you any more than 1500 revs. That is not enough power to get over the sand dune. You need, let's say, 3,000 revs to get over the sand dune. So you command a car to give you more revs, but it says no. And that is in conflict with the laws. Let's take a look at those laws again. The first law says a robot may not injure a human being or, through inaction, allow a human being to come to harm. Well, I'd argue that through inaction, it has allowed a human being to come to harm. The second law says a robot must obey the orders given by a human being. Well, clearly, if you have put your foot to the floor and requested 3,000 revs and the car is only giving you 1,500, then that's a um, disobedient. But here's the thing. The car could give you the 3,000. It's software limited. And the third law, a robot must protect its own existence. And that's what the car is doing. As long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. And clearly it does. The car is saying, I'm going to preserve my engine and that takes priority over the well-being of your grievously ill occupant. Now, there's really good reasons why manufacturers put in these limits. They are for the good of the driver. Nobody wants to replace an engine because they've money shifted, for example. That makes total sense. Nobody wants to have to replace any part of the car because they've made a mistake. Those limits make, make a total sense there. There's warranty, there's insurance, there's liability, there's all sorts of these very, very good reasons. And I think for a lot of cars, the limits are perfectly fine. But for four wheel drives, I disagree because there are going to be situations where you really need the car to do something. And I think it should be the right of the driver to say, you know what, I am making a considered choice here. I know that I might damage the engine by asking for 3,000 revs to get over this dune, but I want to do it. And also, once I'm over, what I'm going to do is stop, 
and then I'm going to allow the engine to cool, I'm going to put more water in it, whatever the case may be, and then I'm going to go again. So I'm actually going to manage the situation differently as opposed to just limit the revs to 1500. I'm going to go to 3000 and then I'm going to manually cool the engine. That's the sort of choice I feel that us four wheel drivers should be allowed to make, but we're not. Now an easy fix would simply be to say something like, okay, if you override limp mode or whatever the case may be, then your warranty is void. It's all on you. The consequences are all something you need to accept. And in extremis, you can go accept, tick, I agree. You know, the price of an engine, that's okay in context of saving someone's life. I will, I will accept that risk. And then there's a record of that in the car's ECU and the manufacturer can go, well, you abused the car, you have to pay for your own engine. I think that's entirely fair. So what do you think about the future? Do you think that right now cars disobey Isaac's laws? Do you think Isaac's laws are reasonable? And what is your solution to the self-driving car ethics problems? I do have one. I might make another video about it, but I'm interested to see what you guys think.